Us starting the series in Virginia is not a random decision. It is very strategic and symbolic. I mean, Virginia is the original waterway. It's the James River and Chesapeake Bay. It's legendary and it's where our country started. And I think it's just more than appropriate to start this incredible series in an incredible state that offers such a unique set of experiences. 14 years ago I left to wound a friend I'm already home Meeting Tim and, and Ryan in their state, I mean, we are trying to decide which was crazier them letting strangers into their house or Justice and I going to stay at a stranger's house all the way across the country and we'd only spoken you know a handful of times on the phone call. When Cole originally told me that he found a random person on the internet just started talking to them and that we were gonna stay with them in Virginia I was a little bit taken back. I didn't know what to expect with them either. <laughs> Sometimes things just click and you just know like this is gonna be great, we need to make this happen no matter what. Surfing, smallmouth, musky, cobia, brook trout, like what's not to like? And it's just a great place to start. So that first morning, we load up the truck and we head to the boat ramp to meet one of Ryan and Tim's friend who had a boat and we were gonna go search for some cobia. <laughs> How are you? What's up, man? I'm Cole. Cole, Corey Brown. Corey, nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. Yeah, oh yeah. I'll until have you. Until I met Ryan, at, or until fairly recently, I never really knew that fly fish in salt water was, uh, a, was thing? a thing. Like it was a really good first Virginia experience because I feel like we really got to see and it just encapsulated Virginia. Yeah. Trying to track down Cobia is not really like anything I've done before. It really slow, you're just looking for them and then boom, out of nowhere you find them, it's on, it's like, a, then it's like a hunt. Anyone that's done this knows this. Searching for cobia, sometimes it all boils down to getting one shot. And that's kind of what ended up happening for us was we searched you know, all morning and into the afternoon for a shot at cobia, and we ended up getting one shot. Ryan was actually up on top of the shade platform of the bay boat, searching just to get a little bit better leverage and look down at the water. And he spotted one, managed to get one cast on it, but it was a smaller cobia and just didn't connect. We couldn't get it done with the cobia because of that we started going after a new species of sheep's head just to be able to get something in the boat. We've been dreaming of this series for years and I would have never guessed that I would have kicked off this series with the sheep's head. Unconventional tackle. And for people that know me, that's like, it's just not anything I would ever do, but I had a blast doing that. First Virginia fish. That's the uh, start of the 50 state pursuit right there Woo! with a sheep's head. <laughs> That's awesome. Pressure's <laughs> off. So, so that thing just smoked it? Yeah. And I anticipate that this series, as we'll make our way through each state, I'm gonna end up doing a bunch of different types of pursuits that I just never would have thought I would enjoy, branch out, find additional things that 
I really do enjoy doing. Day two rolled around and we got back to doing what I grew up doing and cutting my teeth on, and that's getting into some backwater for redfish. Ryan and Tim know those backwaters like the back of their hand, and we'd never been there, and they were just filling us in on the game plan. There's definitely some different features to it, and the mud and the sand was totally different, and even the colors of the redfish I noticed were different. All right, y'all, we hit the backwaters. We are now in canoes, kayaks, and stand-up paddle boards. So they're kind of showing me the backwaters, the marshes. We've already seen a couple redfish tails, like right at home now. It's so cool just to see that all the way on the other side of the country, they got marshes that have the same fish that grew up on. And so they're showing me kind of how they like to go after these fish out here, and it's definitely a little different. I've already learned like two or three new things, which as we progress and we cover the entire United States and we fish and hunt with all these different people that all have their own unique ways of doing things. Just so excited to learn from each one of those people and become a better outdoorsman because there's so much to learn out there. There's a good saying that listen to everybody like they have something to teach you because it's true. Everybody has their own way of doing something that is better than yours. Cole and I were just, we were struggling because we were like, we gotta fish this. There's a cove right there. There's a pocket. We gotta fish that. There's gotta be a redfish in that. And Tim and Ryan are just like, no, come on, like, let's go. And he basically just laid it plain to me and said, I'm gonna go over here and actually catch fish. We're like, what? They're like, what's going on? And so finally we get way back in there. Tim just pops off, I think, two right off the bat. <laughs> Local boys definitely showed Justice and I how to do it. We got put in our place for sure. Woo! All red. On the eight weight. On the fly you gave me. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. You're back now. Once Ryan and Tim kind of showed us what they're looking for and how they're fishing for this redfish. Justice was able to put all that new knowledge into action and hook into a redfish herself. And I'll never forget, she is on the paddle board, hooked into this redfish, and it looks like she's going like 10 miles an hour, like straight into this little section of dock. And I'm like, I don't know how she's gonna win this one. Because <laughs> just all the elements were stacked against her. And he did one big jolt towards the pylons and just broke off under the pier. So that was disheartening, but the best part of catching redfish is the fight. And you can just see the disappointment in her face, but it was just awesome to see Justice hook into one of those on the fly rod and get dragged around. My dad had 10 brothers and sisters. Holy Mom had six or seven, so I have a lot of cousins running around too. What's the overall consensus for the day? I mean, pretty successful. How many you put in the boat? Two? Got one, lost one. Got one, lost. Oh, yeah, you lost that one. Yep. Got broken off. And then you? Half. Half? Point five? <laughs> Guess how many I got? Fat zero. So, point five. 1.5. 1.5. He's got, I don't know, we'll call it 5. 5.5. Man, Justice, I wish you had landed yours. I wish you got the uh, Virginia Beach sleigh ride. That's what we like to call it. That's a good name. The Virginia Beach sleigh ride. It's fine, like when we're, you know, fishing pretty far apart, we obviously can't hear as well, yeah. but we'll like, we'll look over and I'll see Ryan just, just get <laughs> drug across or <laughs> vice versa, yeah. Finally, midday hit and we stopped seeing redfish, so we backed off and we exchanged our 
canoes and paddle boards or surfboards. <laughs> After we had had our East Coast fill, we took off for the mountains. We moved inland and headed up into the mountains and we were going to go chase after some native brook trout. And we met up with Tim and Ryan's friend BJ, who was kind enough to show one of his favorite little creeks and it was just gorgeous. It was just giant hardwood stretching up and big boulders covered in moss. And beautiful little brook trout that were just exactly what we were hoping to get after. Topwater Timmy has put a bunch of fish on the fly, but he doesn't like to touch the fish. Justice over here is a sniper. Doesn't miss the fish. BJ's definitely on his home waters because he's tearing it up and kicking our tails. I feel good. I've got one native. How many holes have you spooked? <laughs> a lot. I think she's only spooked three holes. That's a pretty good day for her. Oh! Three holes and just got one fly. The transition from that coastal region to this is just crazy and it's only a couple hours apart. You can catch redfish in the morning, catch a wave, go surf, and be here by the evening to catch a brook trout. That's pretty cool. That's a pretty unique feature to a state. There's not very many states that I can think of that you could say something similar to that. That evening we had to leave behind Ryan, Tim, and BJ, but then after that we kept heading west and we met up with Joe. You know, we showed up and it's just a beautiful morning with fog rolling in over the mountains. The day before, unfortunately, we had a bunch of rain and the river was blown out and did look chocolatey. Given the remoteness of where we were, we really didn't have a better option other than just to send it and float it. And 
to see if we could pull something off. Launch that raft. It's telling Joe, Justice, sometimes muddy water makes really big fish do some stupid stuff. And then halfway joked, and like, it'd be pretty cool if we hooked into a muskie. All right, so here's the deal. We showed up this morning, Mr. Joe here. He's got us a river, but unfortunately we had a big spike of rain last night. As you can see, got a lot of chocolate milk. The best. I will say, muddy rivers have produced my biggest fish. Sometimes those smarter fish think they're a little too smart. I think they can still eat. I think there's no fishermen out on the water, but we're here. I mean, I, I like coming up, going and fishing out under. See how there's trees are overhanging the river a good bit and inviting shade, and this is sunnier. Uh -huh. So I probably like to hit that. Okay. Unless it gets really shallow over there, which is hard to tell. Yeah. Um, so we'll check that out. But you like those big root systems coming in? Yeah. Okay. Like 12 casts into the float, Joe hooks into something and looks back at me and says, that's not a smallmouth. Dude, that's a good fish. Good job, Joe. Holy! Is that a good fish or what? Dude, that, that might be a muscle. Are you kidding me? Not kidding. It looked like a smallmouth. Hey, we're gonna go. We're gonna see the shore on the left past those trees. We're gonna go park the boat right there and land. Holy crap, dude! Dude, that's not a smallmouth cutting down like that. Oh my gosh! I was joking. I was. I was 100 percent joking. Same. You got Made of stay. Really? <gasps> no! It's all right. I Dude. don't even feel like I did anything wrong. No, you didn't. No. Except for maybe I could have tried to muscle him in more, but... That fish wasn't anywhere close to being done, either. I don't think so. I, that... I mean, that fish was in charge, that's for sure. I didn't think we were A muskie! Get... I didn't think we were going to get into that. I, okay, but right before, it was, what, two minutes before that? I yeah. said, we were hooking to a muskie. <laughs> Joke. And Joe's like, ha ha, this is a great river like, for muskie. I'm like, they're up here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's one. Dude, Let me just catch one real quick. But that's literally the fish, they call it the fish of 10,000 casts. You want to hear a funny story about that? The first time I ever went muskie fishing was with, with a bunch of old guys. Um, like right outside of Lynchburg on, on the James River, like 60 miles downstream from here. I'd never been muskie fishing and you know wasn't really that into it. It was in the dead of winter, like February or something like that. I caught a muskie on my second cast, ever fishing for muskie. <laughs> oh my goodness. And that's the quote that they kept saying. Well, it's how like many casts did you make this morning? 25? Yeah. 25 casts this morning? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think I'll keep this fly on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Should we, uh, Catch another? No, I think we need a moment of silence. Oh, okay. No? <laughs> Come on, train. After that, it was kind of a, a slow start to the day, and we weren't getting any eats, and we were doing a bunch of fly changes. Water was still muddy, and about one o'clock rolled around, we stopped, did a lunch, and you know, we had a couple eats sitting there, and then we noticed uh, the water, the water's starting to clear up. It might be on. We really only had two or three miles left in the float. I love Virginia because it is very diverse in terms of what it has to offer recreationally. I mean, you have the Tidewater area in Eastern Virginia with the Chesapeake Bay, the Atlantic Ocean, um, all of the different creeks and rivers that dump into that and all the recreational opportunities that provides. Favorite species to chase on a fly rod in my state is Without question, smallmouth bass. Catching brook trout in the mountains is great, and that's our native species, so that's a close second. But the smallmouth give you that fight that just doesn't exist with a brook trout, and not to mention it takes you to some pretty beautiful places in Virginia chasing them. So I love the fight, I love the way they look, and it's just, uh, it's a great time. I'm about to drop anchor, I'm gonna get out. Okay. I'm gonna get out and, and you come can. with you. Yeah, go for it. You got it. I'm, I'm free, I'm free. 
freaking go! Cole had to jump out and land it with his hands because he forgot the net. My dog would be jumping up trying to bite this fish. Having a good time, Let's but that go. just, <laughs> but that just kind of. Dude, smallmouth in Virginia. Dude, that's a wrap right there. We can just float. Yeah. We have two more packs of hot dogs. Two more packs? What? No, I'm kidding. I don't <laughs> have find another I said do we. Dude, I'm telling you. Thanks for all the assists on both of y'all. Because I was, when I was I about was... to get out of the boat, my fly line was wrapped around uh, yeah. this thing. And so it's kind of, I couldn't just jump out. The fly line. I mean, he was out in the deep water just hunkering down. And he finally smashed it. Dude, yeah. this water is clear now. I mean, we're, it's on. It's on. We need to. It's on. I think as we progress through this series, I think we're gonna find more and more of these states that are quote unquote sleepers that no one really thinks about, but have amazing experiences in these people's backyards that even locals might not even know about. And that's what I want this series to be. I want it to be grassroots and down to earth and, and fun and expose some opportunities that people have in their own backyards so that they'll protect and conserve them. And that's the ultimate goal, is have a generation of people that care about the resources in their own backyards. We want our films to be down to earth and feel accessible to people. And I realize that doing things on the raft and on a boat may feel like, well, I don't have those things. And I would never be able to take a boat out for Cobia or take a raft out because I can't afford that or don't have this. And I think the key to that is connection unlocks opportunity. And the work that you have to put in to connecting with people that have resources and finding ways to provide value to those people.